Good morning, viewers. In part one of our NASA double play, we are going to be talking about the recent return of Starliner. Just a few hours after undocking from the ISS, Starliner returned safely, and as near as we can tell, without any significant incident, exactly as Boeing predicted. So now that all of this has happened, what kind of position is Boeing taking on the future of this spacecraft? What might they ask NASA to do now, at least in their minds, they've proven that even if this spacecraft does encounter problems, it can still safely transport personnel to and from the ISS without incident. Well, we're going to find out exactly what Boeing might be demanding of NASA here in the near future and whether or not they are actually arguing from a position of logic or from a position of self-preservation. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good morning, space flight enthusiasts, and welcome to part one of a NASA double play that we're going to be doing today on The Angry Astronaut, bringing everyone up to date on the latest significant events taking place at America's National Space Agency. So, Calypso, yes, that is the name of this spacecraft, undocked from the ISS and, compared to most undockings, sped away from the space station as rapidly as possible at NASA's request because they didn't trust this faulty spacecraft operating anywhere near their multi-billion dollar space station. And you know, I find it rather surprising that no news agency has latched on to the idea that Calypso is an appropriate name for this spaceship from an ironic perspective because Calypso was the name of the nymph that kept Odysseus captive on on her island, delaying his return home to his kingdom of Ithaca for seven years. Interestingly enough, it was malfunctioning Calypso that also kept the astronauts captive on the ISS for all this time, and now they're not going to be returning until next year, nearly a year late from their original planned return date very strange indeed that this spacecraft would have this name, but all of that being the case, we need to keep in mind that Calypso did return, as near as we can tell, perfectly without incident. There may have been some minor problems with the thrusters, but if there were, redundancy thrusters kicked in, the deorbit burn was performed appropriately, the spacecraft re-entered the atmosphere at the proper trajectory, and the heat shield performed well, the separation of the service module from the main crew module, that seemed to go just fine, and all three parachutes opened. And this is exactly what the experts at Boeing said was going to happen during this return, and they provided a great deal of evidence prior to NASA's decision anyway that this would be the result. They had carried out seven ground tests of the reaction control system thrusters during this time that Starliner was docked to the space station, one free flight hot fire test of five of the thrusters, a docked hot fire test of seven of the thrusters, a second docked hot fire test of 27 of the thrusters, 100,000 undocked to landing computer model simulations were carried out to prove that Calypso could bring the astronauts home even in its current condition, plus nine hardware and software integrated tabletops, 18 runs, and 230 hours of testing in the avionics lab, detailed inspections of Starliner 1, Starliner 2, and other service module hardware, and finally, a comparative analysis of the first two flight tests, OFT and OFT2, to compare to this one to ensure that they would be able to bring this spacecraft home safely in the same way that they brought the first two test flights home safely. So now that all of this has happened, now that Boeing has, well, sort of been vindicated here at the end of the process, it's possible that Boeing might have some demands to 
make of NASA in order to try to keep the beleaguered Starliner program alive. Now you'll pardon me while I play devil's advocate for a little while. First of all, Boeing could argue quite legitimately that Butch and Sunni need not be stranded on the ISS right now. They could have brought them home some time ago, actually, but they went through a great deal of effort to prove, or at least simulate, that Starliner could bring them home safely before NASA finally made the decision, after all the work that Boeing did, to not trust them and to leave Butch and Sunni up on the ISS anyway. From Boeing's perspective, I would be pretty damn annoyed about this decision, and it gets worse than that. Two NASA astronauts, two young women, as I mentioned in a previous video, have been bumped off of a future mission, the Crew-9 mission that I'll be covering, by the way, here in a couple of weeks. Really excited about that, especially given the fact that NASA gave me a press pass for the whole thing, but Boeing could argue that it wasn't Starliner that required that these two women get bumped off the mission, it was NASA. Had NASA just allowed Starliner to do its job as it had done on the previous two missions, even though OFT-1 and OFT-2 may not have gone very well, they got the spacecraft home safely on both occasions. And this time, Boeing had a lot more time to devote to making sure that the spacecraft was safe and viable for a re-entry, and NASA still didn't let them bring the astronauts home. And once again, Boeing could argue that this had nothing to do with them. They knew all the time that they were going to be able to get Butch and Sunni home safely, and so there was no need to make any changes to the Crew-9 manifest. That being the case then, once Boeing has demonstrated that their thrusters are functioning properly, once they solve this overheating issue in a vacuum chamber under the appropriate temperature conditions, once they've demonstrated that these doghouse thrusters aren't going to go through the same problems that they did on this flight, they should just go ahead as normal now. No further flight tests should be necessary. The only thing that went wrong was the thruster issue, and once those thrusters are up and running properly, then Starliner should be ready to start taking crews up to the ISS by the end of next year. The American taxpayer has invested over $4 billion in this spacecraft, and it's time for them to get a return on their investment. And Boeing has demonstrated that even if things go wrong with this spacecraft, they can still get their astronauts home safely. Indeed, they also got the astronauts up to the ISS. Yeah, it was problematic, it was filled with issues, but they got them there, and they could have gotten them back home as well, which is what Starliner was designed to do. Iron out the kinks, and then get Starliner back into operation as quickly as possible. That's what Boeing would argue, and they have a little bit of a point if we are to assume that one day Crew Dragon is going to experience some sort of accident or anomaly that will lead to it being grounded for a while. We've already had Falcon 9 grounded on a couple of occasions for issues that didn't involve public safety, so fortunately the rocket returned to service rather quickly, but something in the future could end up being a lot more serious, which could end up either stranding astronauts on the space station or simply preventing astronauts from getting to the space station in the first place and making them totally reliant on the Soyuz, which is a completely unacceptable situation. America needs that alternative. They need Starliner. Or do they? Do they really? Well, let me go ahead and stop being devil's advocate now for a moment. The fact of the matter is, Boeing has no one to blame but themselves for this current situation. They had problems with their engines in 2022, and they should have done a lot more testing to determine what went wrong with those thrusters back then, so the same problem would not recur during a crude flight test in 2024. But they failed to do that. All the testing that Boeing did while Starliner was docked to the ISS, all of that should have been done prior 
to Butch and Suni setting foot inside that spacecraft. And I am appalled that that didn't happen, that Boeing didn't carry out all that testing and anticipate that these problems could come up with these thrusters, especially given that they had encountered similar problems in 2022 with their last flight test. How do you miss details like that? And so NASA really had little choice at that point. Regardless of what proof Boeing gave them at the time, NASA's current philosophy is to always err on the side of safety. Always, always, always. By not doing that on two occasions in previous decades led to 14 dead astronauts and two destroyed space shuttles. NASA does not want to repeat those mistakes, and so Boeing should be in no way surprised that everything went down the way it did. So what do we do at this point? Well, I continue to advocate for scrapping the Starliner program altogether to take the money that was supposed to go into those future missions that Starliner was going to be taking up to the ISS and instead invested in a human-rated dream chaser. Give someone else a shot at this because after all this time and after all these attempts at this stage i think it's time to pull the plug on boeing pull the plug on the starliner program let boeing try to get their house in order in the hopes that eventually they might be able to put out a quality product at the price point that they guaranteed on the front end you hearing that, SLS developers? Let's try to get Boeing in a better place than they are right now before we put human lives at risk inside Boeing spacecraft. I would like to thank David Blaisdell, Aaron, and Rick Miller, my latest Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your help. It's you guys that are going to get me across the Atlantic, get me to this Crew 9 flight. So excited to bring you all these details, behind the scenes tours at NASA, interviews with the astronauts, and of course, a live stream coverage of the launch. All of that, I think, is going to be very spectacular. Can't wait to bring that to you. And if you'd like to join these folks, all the details are in the description. Thanks again for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, stay angry about space.